Hello and welcome back to the series on topic modeling for the purposes of the digital humanities all in Python. In this video, we're going to be moving on away from the question that we posed in the last video of why do topic modeling, and we're going to start looking at some of the core concepts and terminology that you need to be familiar with. And we're really going to only be dealing with three terms in this video, and it's because these are the essential, most important terms when it comes to topic modeling. There are others that I will introduce you to as the videos progress, but these three terms are essential. Now, I know topics might seem like a thing that you already are familiar with, but I promise you in this video, you'll see why topics is a term that you really need to understand in order to understand the core concepts behind topic modeling, either rules-based or machine learning based. The other word, and I've mentioned this in a few videos, clustering. Now clustering, we're going to see generally has the same meaning across all uh, computer science, data science, uh, uh, kind of subfields such as topic modeling. But in topic modeling, it actually has a very particular role in its relationship to topics. And k-means is something that you really need to be familiar with because we're going to be using it throughout this series. And k-means is a type of clustering, how clustering is performed. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Now, I thought the best way to approach this is to kind of look at two different results. We're going to look at a text-based result that we see here, and I'll go over this in just a second. And we're also going to be looking at a data visualization result, which will be a, a little bit different and allow for you to see how the data is going to look throughout the series. And by the end of the series, you're going to be able to produce graphs like this that reveal topics and clustering. And you're also going to know what this whole graph is actually showing. So let's just kind of jump right in. So the first thing I want to talk about is this idea of topics. So topic modeling, you might think to yourself, I'll be able to give a computer a series of documents and it's going to output a series of topics for each of those do documents. And while that is conceptually what happens, that's not actually what happens in practice. A computer, while you're training a system, it, it can't determine what the topics are. Once a topic is a topic model is trained, if machine learning based, it'll give you a numerical value for what a document might be. And you can use that numerical value to link to topics that you've assigned. You as the human have to determine what the topics are. So the question is then, how do you determine what the topics are? Well, whether you're doing rules based, like so TF, IDF, or you're using LDA, um, so machine learning based approaches to topic modeling, you're really going to have to do the same essential step, determine what the topics are. And it's going to depend a lot on your data that you're working with. In this series, we're going to be working with the truth and reconciliation um, volume seven data that comes out of South Africa. It's a 22,000 entries that detail uh, violence to victims of apartheid violence during the 20th century. And what we're going to be doing is using these 22,000 brief descriptions to try to extract some kind of meaning and distance reading from them. And I'll be sharing all this data and all this code as we get to part two of the series, and I'll be providing Jupyter Notebooks. But let's take a look at one of the outputs. This is the output from our TF IDF video, which will be coming out in early February of 2021. And we see that we've got a few different clusters. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit for a second so you can see that I have determined, I've told the model and the, or the TF IDF algorithm that I want to see 10 different clusters. So we have cluster zero. Remember, always start with an index of zero down to cluster nine. So 10 total clusters. Now, what you see outputted here are the top terms per cluster. One of the key essential components of determining topics is to print out and examine as a human, as a content expert, a list of the top 10 most frequent terms in a cluster. And I'll talk about clusters in just a second. For right now, think about clusters as uh, synonymous with topics, just for right now. They aren't, but that's a good way to begin. So in this cluster, cluster zero, so uh, the algorithms figured out that there's t it wants to divide everything into 10 topics, and it's going to output the most frequent words in each of those topics, each of those clusters. And these are what you get. So cluster zero is our documents that always or have a high frequency of mentioning police, beaten, detained, members, severely tortured, severely beaten, Cape, probably a reference to Cape Town. I'm not sure because uh, I can't remember if I put bigrams into this model. Again, I'll tell you what bigrams are in the future. Uh, arrested and baptizvana. Uh, uh, so this is a location in South Africa. 
Uh, and I assume Cape here is referring to some kind of location, either West Cape or Cape Town. But what we see here are terminology that we would very easily be able to look at this. And even without being content experts, uh, you could say simply this this cluster is these top this topic would probably be something like um, victims involved with some kind of uh, a police uh, being detained and beaten, tortured by police, some kind of concept that deals with uh, police. So these victims were the victims of um, of police who captured them, beat them, detained them, etc. On down the list. These are the 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 topics. This is what I would assign a topic to with cluster zero. So I would call this maybe the police cluster. If we go down to uh, to cluster one, we see a lot of names. Oh, it looks like I did have bigrams and trigrams. A bigram is a word that is represented with uh, with two words, and a trigram is a a word or a concept that is represented by three words. I'm going to talk all about bigrams and trigrams in a future video, uh, probably the next one, the next key concept video. So what we have here are a bunch of places, places that are probably connected together in some capacity. I don't claim to be an expert on South Africa. We have another person in the team who is that's working on this data. But what we're seeing here are very specific regions and very specific kinds of attacks. So I would assign this as uh, maybe the arson attacks in whatever this region of South Africa is. So that's that cluster. Another cluster that we have is we've got a, a, a cluster, cluster two. So this topic is something to deal with amnesty being graded and uh, a specific group, so NK operatives, and dealing with amnesty and acts of uh, killing in some way. So this this would be like an amnesty MK operative uh, group to or topic in that sense. And again, you can see what I'm doing. I'm going through and I am manually as a human looking at the top keywords and trying to discern some kind of topic. Now, trial and error here is essential. You want to explore different what we would call number of clusters or the k-means. So the amount of the uh, clusters that you want to actually see clustered together. So if you wanted to see 20 clusters, you would have then 20 different clusters, 20 different topics that you'd have to look through like this. You always want to look through these topics, these keywords to see if a group is actually making sense as an actual topic and then go and manually check some of these that fall into this category. But you can see what I'm doing here. If you go down the list, cluster four is very clearly dealing with uh, political, something kind of political violence. And uh, I would presume that organization right there, IFP. If you keep on going down the list, we see IFP and ANC. This is clearly an AF, uh, IFP ANC uh, connection between the two, something to do with burning. Uh, again, we see another amnesty group. This is a good indication when you see two clusters that overlap a whole bunch. Maybe they should be viewed as one cluster and one topic together. And that's going to be where visualizations come in, which we'll see in just a second. Uh, cluster seven, we're going down the list. We see another, this is another distinct group of individuals. So um, Inkatha and UDF kind of being involved there. And we're seeing the same thing here. We're seeing this is dealing a lot with shot. So the individuals here in this cluster are very clearly dealing with some kind of uh, shooting. And we see cluster nine dealing almost exclusively with, it looks like arson attack, arson, uh, lost home, house. So it looks like arson attacks on, on specific houses. So this is a good way to kind of just get a sense of your data very quickly. I always like to start off with 10 clusters. And then what I do is I'll go down to five, go up to 20, and I'll start just experimenting with different cluster sizes. And maybe it's a good time to now talk about clusters. And I think the best way to talk about clusters is to look at them on a nice and pretty graph. So what we have here is a graph. We're going to see this visualization uh, coming out of our video or our uh, lesson on LDA. And uh, we're going to be going all over, over all this. And we're going to be working with um, Jupyter Notebooks in this video to get this kind of output. And we're working specifically with a great library in Python called um, Py, uh, PyBiz. So it's coming out of this Py LDA viz, which takes in a whole bunch of data from Python and produces this amazing, beautiful, useful graph that is interactive in a matter of seconds, which is absolutely incredible. And it, it can be all done. This was all done, and I think maybe four lines of code. I can't remember. But what we're seeing here is a more easily understandable visual representation of what we would call clusters. And this is why I was saving clusters for right now. Now, clusters are essentially topics, but what clusters are that makes them different is clusters are the uh, the topics when plotted. So the documents that coalesce to having the greatest degree of similarity. 
Now, the reason why it's nice to visualize these is because if we look back at that text file, we don't get a sense of how much cluster nine overlaps with cluster eight or cluster eight overlaps with cluster seven. We can get that raw data. We can see how much they, they overlap. We can explore the, the terminologies and see where the terminology overlaps. But it's a lot easier to just look at a graph. And what this does is it plots out all those clusters. So the X and Y axis don't actually mean anything here. Forget everything you know about them. They are useful, for, however, for understanding proximity and similarity. So the clusters, these are these circles that overlap a high degree, are ones that tend to have words in common or kind of conceptually are, are very similar. So three and four overlap a little bit. So this overlap here tells me that there's a good chunk of documents that overlap with concepts of police, brutality, beaten, etc. on the list. And then this graph, I think I produced 25 clusters, it looks like, maybe 30, I can't remember now. Um, but we see that three, however, deals with injure, kill, AC, grant, operative, person. So there is something that's happening where we see an overlap between AC, amnesty, and police brutality and, and beating and youths. So that's what we're seeing there. We can also see that one is overlapping a little bit with 18. Now, the size of these clusters can also be easily understood. I can look at this graph and see very easily how uh, the quantity of, of topics, the quantity of documents that assign, are assigned to a specific cluster. So there are very few documents that align with uh, 18 here. So May and SADF. So this is a result of a specific month and a specific organization. Uh, 22, same thing. Family, exile, go receive information. Definitely its own individual cluster. One, we're seeing there are a lot of documents that are in cluster one. It looks like it's the largest on this graph. Member, shoot, dead, name, house. And I've looked a lot at this data. This this does make sense. There's a lot of cases of members being shot. Uh, there's a lot of instances of, of houses being involved uh, through attacks. And so we're going through this list and we, and we can see it. But what this graph also does is when you're looking at clusters, so when you're looking at the plotted out clusters of data, this graph also allows for you to easily understand if your number of clusters is correct. If you were to look at this graph and see a whole bunch of things that look like 21 all kind of spread out um, and maybe all overlapping in one specific area, uh, then maybe you've got too many clusters. On the other hand, if you're plotting out this data and you see one, let's say one is five times the size and everything else is an individual small things like 21 here is, then that's going to tell you that maybe you have too few clusters and you need to actually increase the number. Again, a lot of this is trial and error and a lot of this is going to be in the eye of the beholder. This, however, will give you a very good sense about what documents are most similar and how... Uh, what kind of, it'll give you a sense of what kind of themes or uh, keywords are used in those documents of a similar nature. So this is a good sense to, to do some kind of targeted research or make some kind of broad analysis about your corpus as a whole. So that's a little bit about the, the key terminology. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was k-means. And essentially, I've already kind of addressed this. This is the uh, the degree to which we actually uh, tell the, the the program how many clusters we'd like to see, and it's going to divide everything up into k-means. I'm, I'm only talking about it right now so that you have a familiarity with it and are understanding how these clusters are determined, the quantity of clusters. I'm going to address k-means k -means a whole bunch in a lot more detail uh, in part two of this series when we use it for TF-IDF, so topic frequency inverse document frequency. That's going to be it for this video, though. Hopefully you have a good sense of the key terminologies, uh, such as topics and clustering and a, brief, and a basic understanding about how we determine topics using key words. In the next video, I'm going to start jumping into some of the, the more uh, grammatically and uh, grammatical and semantical uh, concepts that you need to know, such as bigrams and trigrams and why they're essential in topic modeling. And then that'll allow us to move on to part two and actually start doing some rules-based topic modeling. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below.